Welcome to Picture This. I am Chenda. I'm working from home today. And my name is Janaya, and I'm from the Billie Jean King Main Library. And we're both working for the Long Beach Public Library in Long Beach, California. And May, we're excited to announce, is Asian American Pacific Islander Month. So we're going to kick off um, with books and events, but for Picture This, we have lots of picture books to share. Um, picture This is our monthly conversation, airing the first Wednesday of every month. Danea, what do you have to share this month? Okay, well, I have four books that I want to share for Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. My first book is Ho'onani Hula Warrior by Heather Gale. Um, and this book is based on the documentary of A Place in the Middle by filmmaker Steen Hammer, Joe Wilson, and the help of Tina Le Moana Kwe Kong Wong Kalu. The story is about a young girl named Ho'onani who doesn't see herself as a wahini, which means girl in Hawaiian or Thaiing, which means or boy. Um, in Hawaiian culture, uh, for those who embrace feminine and masculine traits are called mahus. And in the front, in the beginning of the story, you actually can read, there's an excerpt in the beginning that tells you about um, the, the role of the mahu in their society and how they're really looked highly upon, they're very valued. Um, so in this story, Ho'onani is, wants to audition for the high school kind, which is a traditional um, hula chant. And these are mostly done, uh, these chants are mostly done by males. And so she wanted to go and try out for it. And there is, and with that, he had to audition three times with this um, to be able to see if he could be part of the group. And she went to all three and she was excited and she was nervous to do this because she was the only girl. But she felt it inside her that this is something that she wants to do. Her parents supported her, but her sister wasn't really sure about this. Like she just wasn't sure why her sister wants to do a lot of stuff, more of the kind stuff. Um, but uh, what well, Nani was like, I like, she likes to do both. And she wanted her to accept her just like that. So see at the at the audition, you can see that they're all boys. There's no girls that are trying out for except for Ho'onani. So um the great thing is that she she kept going, she persevered and she was strong, sure, and steady. And she ended up being their leader for the performance. So on that day, she was nervous, but she kept going. And as you read through the book, you can see that like all the wonderful things that she has to do to get to it. And this is them at the performance. And there she is right there. She's right into them. She's leading the group. And she and, and throughout the story, you hear you just you see this is a strong, sure, and steady. That's what she was. And um, even though her sister was kind of hesitant about her doing all these stuff, she was actually the best supporters at the end. Um, I thought this was a beautiful story that's part of the Hawaiian culture. And I hope that y'all check this one out. It's a very beautiful book. Okay, I'm gonna move on to my next one. And the next one is A Big Little Cake for Little Star. And this is written by Grace Lynn. Um, this is a little bit older. This was back in 2018, but I wanted to share this one because it's such a cute story. Uh, this is Little Star. And you can see her, she's eating a big moon cake. <laughs> so in this story, you can see a mother, her mother and little star baking a moon cake. And one night when they were they really able to, um, they bake the cake and the mom wanted to lay out the big moon cake um, out onto the night sky to cool. And her mother told her, don't eat it. You have to save it because it's so big and you want to, you know, you don't want to eat it all. But the little one listen. I don't know. She fell asleep and she was hungry. And she took, she tiptoed and she ended up going to the really big moon cake. And she took a little nibble. And then she went back to sleep. <laughs> 
see if she knocks back. What do you think happened? Let's see. And she kept going back and eating. This is a really big mooncake. <laughs> so, so it's really cute because in this book, you get to see how she really enjoys this mooncake and how so we get uh, how the moon takes shape. So at the end, it's really cute because the mother goes and she wants to go look for the mooncake and there is no mooncake to be found except for a little <laughs> crumbs. So at the end, we have to find out if what happens to little moon, a little star and her mom when her mom finds out that she ate all of the mooncake. So our next one is, I have Drawn Together. This is by, written by Min Lee, and he is a writer and also a first generation Vietnamese American. And um, also the, he has an illustrator, my favorite, Dan Pantak, who helped illustrate this book. Um, this book was published in 2019, but I wanted to showcase this for AAPI. Um, this is a somewhat wordless picture book about a grandson and his grandfather, who I guess you can see that trying to communicate was not really, it wasn't is not the easiest thing to do because language and their likes, they like different things, but they still really love to be with each other. So, um, but never fear, the grandpa notices his grandson drawing and this is something great happens. They come together without the use of words, but by immersing themselves in their drawings together. So Dan Santa did a wonderful job creating the illustrations to help tell the story. So you have to read it to find out how they were able to communicate. And really the illustrations in this book are just beautiful. So that's my other one. And my last one, sorry. <laughs> and then I'll move it on to the agenda. This is um, The Many Colors of Carpreet Singh. So in this book, his story is about Harpreet Singh who loves colors and he has different colored patkas. So patkas are turbans on his head. So, so whatever mood or he, whatever occasion or feeling he has, his, his turbans or his patkas always kind of tell the story. In this story, it's um, his mother finds another job in a snowy town across the country. So Harpreet is usually in a very sunny, happy place that he loves and he has to move. And then he wore, you can tell as time progressed, he was really sad because he had to move. And his turban or his pack has turned to gray because he was sad. And then he turned, and he always wore white because he wanted to become invisible because he was sad. And if you look at it, some of the people kind of notice that he's sad. So one day, as he's walking, he notices a hat on the floor. And it looks like a frown. But then once he picks it up, it's a smile and he knew who it belonged to. And from that day forward, he made a friend of his own. And then after that, the colors came back and everything seemed to be going well. And at the end, you can look, um, you know that he knew and the colors and everything came back to him and he was happy. So it just took time. And it was really, it's a really wonderful book about colors and learning about uh, the turbans because in the back, it actually talks about the history of it. Um, and one of the things I learned was that reading uh, that turbans, your mind speaks that Everyone is equal and important. There's more information on here, but I really like that one. So that is my last book. What about you, Tenda? I know you have some books that you want to talk about. <laughs> I do, but I love your your selections, especially. Um, I I can't wait to um to read about. Is it Hot Creek Sing? Yeah. Especially the the author's note about um Shikism. Yeah. So that's something to the, understand the reason why that, uh, you know, the word a turban. Yeah. And I love, um, I felt so um, touched by the Drawn Together book. Yeah. You know, um, grandparents and parents of um, who come to the United States and don't speak English and then they have children in the United States. 
sometimes um, the the barrier um, of the language barrier is kind of like um, pretty um, pretty wide because you don't um, you don't speak or you don't share the um, your native language at home. So yeah. I hope everyone like um, still celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Month yeah. by actually speaking maybe their native language or having games or even charades using your native language. That's a good way to celebrate yeah. that. But for my first two, it's just general picture books that I love to share. But I love this one. Um, I've been waiting for a long time to share this one, so I'm not going to wait any longer. It's On the Go Awesome by Liesl H. Death Lifson and illustrated by Robert Newbecker. Robert Newbecker, he is an awesome, awesome illustrator. And this one is just a book about plane trains and automobiles, but also using um, superlative and comparative adjective to show the awesomeness of not just looking at something or passively um, viewing trains that are cool, but watching a train is very cool. And, but conducting a, and riding on a train is even cooler because you're in it. But imagine conducting it. Being in control is, you know, going through the mountain is awesome. And it goes through all the different um, modes of transportation, a train, an excavator at a construction site, um, a submarine, or even a monster truck race, um, or even boats and even riding the rockets. And it just keeps saying, you know, being an observer, it's pretty good. Like boats are excellent. Watching a boat race is more race is more excellent. A setting sail on a boat is most excellent. But captaining a boat across the vast ocean, that is awesome. So it's really a wonderful book just on the move. And I love this last illustration because campers are cool. Wait, are campers cool? Sleeping in a camper is totally cool but traveling across the whole country with your family, which some of us hopefully get to do. Now that's awesome. And you can see that. And this illustration, and it's perfect with the um, writing. Everything is so active. And I love that, this book. And um, don't forget, if you're reading this book, you can go back and try to see all the little details in the illustrations, because there's a couple of pages or that shows them a little doggy and you can't miss that so it's a really wonderful full page illustration and um, so i hope you give it um look it up and um check it out and then my other one is um a book written by and illustrated by two surfers so it's really awesome and cool it's a story of mindfulness and surfing so this is mop rides the waves of life a story by jamal yogis illustrated by Matthew Allen. And I love the illustration, plenty of mindful illustration and words that are just perfect. And it's of course in watercolor pencil. I just love this kid. He's mop, and right, you can tell people call him mop because well, it's obvious, right? Look at his head. <laughs> but he doesn't take that as an insult. It's it's part of his um, physical, um, you know, characteristic. So I love to surf and he loves it a lot, lot, lot. He loves everything about surfing in the morning. But then he has to go to school and things are not always like surfing in real life, right? So he got mad at somebody that he pushed and he goes throughout the day and the week and it's just getting really rough. But then his mom said, you know what, Mop, you're a great surfer, but you can learn to surf life too. Surf life, that sounds hokey. Have you tried? So Mop gives it a try. He can start by letting your breath go in and out like the tide. And breathing mindfully helps you notice the emotional waves inside. And, you know, he tries it and it feels like floating on his board. So when you feel bad, just breathe in. Don't be scared. The stormy waves are natural. And it's 
It's wonderful. So you, you see the notice that illustrator, the author and illustrators detail, the waves are kind of like fear, anger, sadness. Those are natural feelings. And like waves, you can just let it go through you. And then when feel it, happy feelings come, enjoy them. Just like his mother, he might, that's so wonderful. So enjoy that. But you know what? Bad things still happen. And you know, mob has to just learn to deal with it. Take a deep breath, you know, let it go a little bit. I felt my breathing in and out like the tides. I remembered angry waves are natural, but then, you know, he had, he saw a choice. So he still felt bad, but he knew bad won't last. And he take, found ways to deal with his emotion and all the way back to the beach. So Mop rides the wave of life. It's really cool and awesome. And I can't wait. The author does have another book coming out. It's Mop rides the wave of change. And I can't wait to see, to read and look at the details of that one. It's illustrated and it's totally awesome. <laughs> just like the two surfers that wrote it and illustrated. So I can't wait for the next one. And then Danae, what do you have? Or do you want me to go on? Oh, you can go ahead and go on. Okay, so this is my my favorite for the AAPI um, sharing because I love this author. He's um, came out a long while ago with the Still Stuck. The author's name is Shinsuke Yoshitake. The boring book and the there must be more than that. It's a really great illustrated book, um, very kind of um, a dry sense of humor, but it's like everyday things that he shows and he shares because the author obviously is a good observer of life. And he just shares like, you know, if you're, if you're bored, um, you might try to um, intelligently explore the ways that, see, that this seemingly stagnant state is actually a portal into a mind-blowing experience and have more fun than anyone ever imagined. So it's encouraging kids, like if you're bored, well, why are you so bored? And then using your mind to get out of your state. And I love this one. Um, but my favorite that is the latest, there must be more than that. <laughs> it's kind of like what we have now when we're like, we're stuck at home in the pandemic kids are learning virtually you know you guys have to watch this video hopefully you're enjoying picture this but you know is the future going to be that way are we going to run out of food because there are too many people will there be plagues and war and aliens invasion and toy the earth will be destroyed by the time we grow up things are going to be so terrible no way really until grandma put it in perspective don't worry, no one really knows what will happen in the future. Sure, there will be bad things, but there will be lots and lots of good things too. Grown up, act like they can predict the future, tell you what to do every way, but they're not always right. And so she goes along and grown ups often tell you to choose one of two things, right? This one or that one. But if neither of them seems right, there are more choices out there. Over here, look, there are many different ways of looking at the future and the future where it's okay to spend the rest of the day in pajamas. Could you imagine? Ah, we can go out. I see some people going out in their pajamas sometimes. <gasps> what if every Saturday is Christmas or whatever holiday where you get the most presents or where you can you just using your imagination, you can think of what, what if ah, the future where someone does your homework for you, ah, that'd be nice. Or if your future where your room has a zero gravity switch, we can just float up and about. And so she convinced her brother, that's pretty cool. And there you go. So you can start thinking of like, what can your future be? What if you have um, a spot in your dress and then your mom lets you paint that spot all over your room and everywhere else. It's pretty cool. And I love the illustration. And if you're, um, are, um, if you really love this um, illustrator author, 
you can check him out in um, like a video he has on NHK. It's a great interview and you learn that he actually um, draw all these pictures in um, in little um, index card because he never, um, he could not draw in big pictures like this. So he has to take the illustration that he draws in little cards and they enlarge it. And it turns out the author, even though he's a wonderful illustrator and gives, gives really funny text, he's not a good colorist. So he's not great in everything. So they have to have somebody that does the coloring separately. And I love this last illustration. It's like, hi, mom, what's for dinner? Huh? Just leftover. But we have some eggs. Do you want one? Boiled or fried? What? Oh, she's so mad. But there are more ways to make an egg than that. And then she has two and a half pages of just other ways you could have your eggs except she can't decide. So I hope you give this author illustrator a try. It's a really wonderful book. So do you, you want to go on? Oh, well, I have Mother's Day books. So do you have any Ooh. other books that you want to talk about? No, my last two is Mother's Day too. Because oh. oh, May is also yes. Mother's Day. Yay. Everyone has one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, or more than one or what? Uh, yes. <laughs> So um, I picked um, two books or and, um, two authors actually for this. So um, this isn't actually a Mother's Day book, but this is a new book that we have in our picture book section and it's titled A Gift for Ama. It's a market day in India. So I thought this was really a fun book to have. And um, Ama in South Indian languages means a mother. So in the story, we follow a girl who wants to go to the market and to surprise her ama with gifts. So she goes to the market and we are presented with such beautiful illustrations. And, and not only that, we have um, not with the illustrations, but we have uh, the colors again, which but then this is different because we have saffron orange. So they're very specific colors and it helps um, describe the beautiful things that she finds and she also makes like this pink page is the lotus pink or peacock green which is actually showing in the background <laughs> and I have vermilion red I had never heard about that and then also there's red hot peppers that spill over her face and she sneezes so I thought this was a really great book and it um, really shows like the life in the market day in India. And also, you, I, we always love it when there's information on the back of the book that tells us about the story. So this actually is, um, at the end, the author explains that uh, the market in the story is based on the Vada Palami and Mai Lapur markets in the author's hometown, Chennai in India. So these are the things that she would probably find at the market. So there's like jasmine, lotus, pigeon, you'll see pigeons over there, terracotta, indigo. So there's the colors. And um, she also talks about different markets around the world. And you can't forget a picture with her mother. So this is the author and her mother. And um, it's a very beautiful book. This is one. And my last um, author is Amy Rosenthal, who has written actually many books about mothers, and these are two that I wanted to show today. So um, the first one is That's Me Loving You, which is a very sweet book. Um, and it's a story of a mother telling her child that um, she is, that no matter where you go, um, she'll always be there. Wherever you are, wherever you go, always remember and always know. So for example, that shimmering star, that's me winking at you. So everything that you might see or you look at, um, the mother's reminding her child that that's just her sending her love. And at the end, no matter what, um, so at the end, that feeling you always have in your heart, that's me loving you, whether together 
four of hearts. So this one's a really, it's a really sweet book if you guys want to read it together. And then this is a really funny one. I love it. And it's bedtime for mommy. So it's a really, it's an opposite. And I think we were talking about this, how uh, parents will love this too. The kids will put them to bed. So in the story, we have a young daughter putting her mother to bed. And it's the same route. She's doing the routines that we would probably do if we were had to put somebody to bed. So it's time for bed, mommy. So as you can see, the mommy's working hard. And she's like, and the mom goes, five more minutes. Okay, five more minutes, but that's it. So they get into the routine. She gives her a bath. She tells her a story, puts her to bed. And don't forget, like, I'm thirsty. So she wants the milk. Or, and then, um, so she finally puts her to bed. But at the end of the story, which I thought was really cute, because we can't forget about her dad. And it's almost daddy, it's time for bed. So this is a really, really adorable book. And at the end, you can see the parents are peeking in on her too. So she really, this is a really cute book. Um, and it's, um, it's a book that you have to check out. And those are my books for Mother's Day. What about you, um, Chenda? Well, I love your choice too. <laughs> um, I do have um, a couple that is um, for, um, this one is Amy Wu and the Patchwork Dragon. Um, it's AAPI appropriate by Kate Zhang and illustrated by Charlene Chow. Um, it's a follow up to um, Amy Wu and the Perfect Bow. And it's a, a little bit of a mixture of um, kind of like um, Western and Eastern kind of like um, storybook about what's your perception or what's your cultural um, um, introduction to dragons. So during story time, the teacher, Miss Mary, reads Amy's class, a book about dragons. And then they do, they listen to the characteristic of a westernized dragon. Um, and, you know, so the dragon are usually hoarders of treasures. They blow fire, they fight the night. And then she tells everyone to make their own dragons. But Amy has a different idea what a dragon should be because of she's heard story from her parents and her grandma. And so she draw a different dragon that does not look like her classmates dragon. And they kind of make fun of her and said, mm, maybe she's wrong. Maybe her dragon is not right. And she struggles with it until she goes home and grandma, oh, why the sad face? Grandma tells her and her grandma gets a twinkle in her, twinkle in her eye. Come, she says, let me tell you a story. And then she tells them about dragons that bring down the rain, dragons that are wise and just, and dragons that fly without wings, very different. And then Amy remembers the dragon, that costume that she has in the attic and they bring it down and then she has a wonderful idea with her parents and grandma's help. They created something of a mixture of the Western and Eastern dragon and shared with her classmates. So it's a really cute story just about what is the different cultural uh, definition of certain creatures and what do you have in mind when you use a certain animal. So a dragon in China story and mythology is very different. So there you go. And then the author included also a dragon activity in the back that you can do. Uh, and then she also explained that Eastern dragon is a symbol of good luck. It's not fearful and strength in many cultures. It usually has a long, thin body and no wings. So that's very different and in different colors and can have wide range of magic powers depending on the story. And often they're very intelligent. Why a Western dragon is usually right. It has four legs and like big leathery wings and claws. And um, so unlike Eastern dragons, they often breathe fire. So their horns tend to be sharp and pointy and their claws look like lizard's claws and they're greedy and live in caves and love treasures. So it's a little different, but that's what you can share on me from um, two different culture, Eastern or Western but they're all wonderful to share. So I hope you give this a try. And my two final books is Celebrating Mother's Day. 
Um, this one I will share first. It's so wonderful. It's digital illustrations and it um, talks about this little girl that is getting ready to go to school and she looks at herself in the mirror. And some people have eyes like sapphire lagoons with lashes that lace, like lace trim on ball gowns, sweeping their cheeks as they twirl. Big, big eyes, long lashes, but not me. So she's looking at her friend who are very different. I have eyes that kiss in the corner and glow like warm tea, just like mama. So happy Mother's Day. Um, so it's wonderfully illustrated. And she goes on to how she feels about having the same features as her mom. Not all of us look like our mom, but it's kind of nice to see them in books that look like us. And her mama is just have eyes that just like Amas. So maybe her grandmother. Oh, and then her grandmother tells her and share her stories. And then guess what? My Amas ne eyes never age. Her eyes are just like Mei Mei. So she has a little sister. The Chinese word for like little um, little sister or younger sister, Mei Mei. So that's, we don't know her little sister's real name, Mei Mei. Mei Mei's eyes that kiss in the corners and glow like warm tea, blink against the window until I come home from school. Oh, there's her little sister modeling after her and they play, they play together. She toddles after me, gazing up at me like I am her best present. And there you go. Mei Mei's eye that kiss in the corners and glow like warm tea are just like mine. And there she is in the future. My eyes that kiss in the corners and glow like warm tea are a revolution. And there you go. You see her eyes. So beautiful. Kind of remind me of you, Danea. <laughs> they are Mama and Mei, Ama and Mei, Mei They are me and they are beautiful. So I hope you guys will take out pictures of your mommies and grandmommies and look at them and see, do you guys have their eyes? Or maybe it's a little different too. Uh, I like and that one. So this one I forgot to introduce is by Joanna Ho and illustrated by Deng Ho. There you go, it's beautiful. And this one is another one to celebrate mommies. And what I like most by Mary Murphy, illustrated by Zhu Sheng Ling. It's a beautiful picture. It's a picture book that has all the illustration that you can possibly love with a perfect little girl in the beginning that says, what I like most in the world is my, and then she starts out with her window, and then she goes on to talk about her apricot jam that her grandma makes. Her favorite shoes is my favorite one because they're the shoes that glow. You know, I've seen these that they blink and they have little lights, and she liked them because Except for these shoes, they have lights that flash to show where I am going. I can walk and jump and run in them. My feet do a tiny bounce with every step. One day the shoes will wear out or my feet will grow too big for them. Right now they are what I like most in the world. Except <laughs> for she goes on to talk about the river that she loves most, the fries that she loves most, and the book and her teddy bear. And of course, she, she even loves her pencil. And there's a picture of her being smaller than her teddy that she got. And her mom, except for you, you have been here since before I was born. You look after me. Mostly we have good times. Even when we are upset with each other, we belong together. And even though you change and I change, Look at her and her mom facing out. What do you think they're fighting about? You think she doesn't want to wear a coat or keep, leave her teddy bear at home? We don't know. What do, you, what do you and your mommy fight about? But you are what I like the very, very most in the world. Oh, that's so sweet. And then at the beginning we see it's like spring and then the summer. And like everything in the beginning to the end, Everything changed, but some things 
remain the same and what you like most in the world. So I hope you guys will give this um, book um, a review or read it and share it together. And what I suggest you can do is you can start out making maybe your own scrapbook, maybe a picture collage of what you like most in the world and why, and see how many you can come up with. That would be a good one. You can put a picture like the illustrated it, what you like most in the world and why. And but except for what's the next one going to be? Do you like going for walks with mommy? Maybe your cat or maybe your dad or who oh. else? Or what else do you like most in the world except? <laughs> so I hope you give this a try. All righty. Oh, we can't forget after besides Asian American Pacific Islander Month and Mother's Day. Um, we have a lot of activities and events to share um, during the month of May. So um, be sure to check out our um, um, library website, lbpl.org or longbeach.gov forward slash library. And also you can find us on Facebook. And if you Google picture this on YouTube, you'll find us there also. Oh, yeah. Good to know. So if, if you're interested in any of the books that we have mentioned today, type in picture this 0421 in the search. So 0521 on our library catalog um, search bar and the list of books will, will appear. So I hope you give that a try. So we'll see you next month. Thank you for joining us for Picture This. Farewell and stay safe. And this is Chenda. And I'm Laura. Bye. Bye.